Thank you for listening to We Have Ways of Making You Talk. Sign up to our Patreon to receive bonus content, live streams and our weekly newsletter with money off books and museum visits as well. Plus early access to all live show tickets. That's patreon.com slash we have ways. This episode is brought to you by Kia's first three row all electric SUV. The Kia EV9. With available all-wheel drive and seating for up to seven adults. With a zero to 60 speed that thrills you one minute. And available reclining lounge seats that unwind you the next. Visit kia.com slash EV9 to learn more. Ask your Kia dealer for availability. No system, no matter how advanced, can compensate for all driver error and or driving conditions. Always drive safely. This episode is brought to you by State Farm. From your morning podcast to your afternoon playlist, State Farm knows you personalize your entire day. And that's why State Farm helps you personalize your insurance with the State Farm Personal Price Plan. It offers coverage options that help protect what you care about most at an affordable price just for you. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Prices vary by state. Options selected by customer. Availability and eligibility may vary. When it comes to picking the perfect treats for your dog, Stuart makes the choice easy by keeping it real. Real ingredients, real nutrients, real benefits. Stuart dog treats are free from additives, corn, soy, wheat, and grains. Plus, they're freeze-dried to lock in all the great nutrition and natural flavor your furry friend deserves. Stuart freeze-dried dog treats. Big, tail-wagging nutritional benefits. Available on Amazon and Chewy. Learn more at StuartPet.com. Action stations, action stations, all hands on deck, all hands on deck. Welcome to We Have Ways of Making You Talk um, with me, Al Murray, and James Holland, of course, where, um, uh, well, I don't know if you could tell from that, we, we've gone senior service again, haven't we, Jim? Yeah, we're, have, having having been rudely quite ignoring the <laughs> Navy for, for many years. For many all, years. All five. <laughs> best part of 700 episodes yeah i think we're kind of making up for it a little bit now and and um, i don't know about you but i've slightly got the bug and i do remember when we were doing we were doing something last year and someone on social media said i do hope you're going to be doing the battle of north cape yeah and i thought ooh, okay so, here so i looked is. into it and read up on it and i thought well actually we do need to do the battle of north cape and then of course it was you know because the battle of the north cape is christmas 1943 and we weren't really doing anything at christmas we were having we were just mm. boozing and and, and making merry mm. there wasn't time to do it so although yeah. 2024 is the year of 1944 mm. in all things we are actually going to kick off this year of a little a little mini series yeah on the battle of the north cape because i i started you know i started reading into it to, to, to prep for one episode but inevitably i got a bit inevitably away. inevitably <laughs> so but i think i also think action stations action stations is a very very strong intro <laughs> So, so um, for those that do not know, this is the, the, the this is the events of Bo- Boxing Day, nineteen forty three, essentially. Yeah. But inevitably, there's 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 some background. There's quite a bit of background, and in fact, I mean the back the background goes back really to sort of before the First World War in a way, because this is about naval balance on one on in, in one way or another, isn't it? This yeah. is about Britain. Britain is a great power. The British Empire is a great power, and how many battleships it's allowed, and then the Versailles Treaty and. How many battleships Germany is then allowed after the First World War, and whether they're battleships or pocket battleships or battle cruisers or whatever, which which delivers yep. us up the, the Christmas turkey that is the Scharnhorst, that yes. is um, the, the the centre of the um, mighty Scharnhorst. The, I mean, make no mistake, the mighty Scharnhorst. It's it, it. She's quite the ship. The British, obviously, although the Royal Navy, and we, we when we have talked about the Royal Navy, one of the things we generally said about it in the Second World War is, you know, it, it's like the trains running on time. It gets stuff done. Mm. It's sort of uh, people don't notice. But but the Scharnhorst is one of those things around which the Navy is extremely concerned. It has been for the whole of the war. Yes. Um, uh, the attention that went into destroying the Bismarck, which is a which is a battleship rather than a battle cruiser, pocket battle, whatever the. I mean, we, we, we'll get onto that. We'll get onto we'll, that. We'll, we'll get onto that. Is important, but. but 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 the but the worry is that that rather than the U-boat threat, the worry is that these big ships with big guns will get out in amongst a convoy, and then and then wreak 
havoc is 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 what the concern is well yes and back in 1941 it's all about yeah. um you know marauding out into the atlantic yeah. and yeah. affecting the atlantic convoys but yeah. but yeah. by by 1942 it's it's not the atlantic convoys they're worried about mm. it's the arctic convoys because yeah. These these capital ships, these German capital ships, which are absolutely kind of sort of armed to the gunnels, yeah, um, and are enormous and fast, are up in the north of Norway in Altenfjord, yeah, yeah. Which and this is right is, this within is, the Arctic Circle, and they can maraud uh, out very easily, and it's very hard to stop them. Yeah, and this is a thing. I mean, obviously, this is a thing that this is one of the aspects that's changed in 1941 to 1942, isn't it? it and then into and then into and then into you know the, the the evolution of the of of the war is because Hitler Hitler brings brings the Scharnhorst Gneisau, out the Prince Eugen Gneisau now and the Prince Eugen back from um, Brest where they've been able to attack in the Atlantic and he bring brings them back in the Channel Dash in February of 1942 which is a terrible disaster for the Royal Navy and the Royal Air Force when three of these capital ships sail up the Channel safe sail through the state Straits of jo- Dover I mean can and, you believe it. Uh, uh, yeah, and it's 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 and it's it's a couple of days before Singapore, so, so this, it's it's a week of full on ignominy for the British military establishment. Mm, it's and, all those moments like June nineteen forty two. Yeah, exactly. Just all, nothing right happens. Although, what's interesting about it is the Shan Horse does hit mines as laid by Bomber Command mm. on its way on its way north. So there is a that you you could argue that actually Bomber Command. It, one way or another is effective in the it, during the yes. channel dash but as covered in episode 709 <laughs> <laughs> um uh, but but the point but the point is these ships are now able to interfere with the arctic convoys which is again a, you know you've got the the confluence of well, hitler's uh, uh, Hitler's yeah. decision making here with these capital ships, which he's desperate to protect because they're prestige vessels. He hasn't really brought them back so that they could deal with the Arctic convoys. He's brought well, them he back. Just, to he just get doesn't them. do naval power, does he? I mean, Hitler well, no, just, he doesn't. doesn't do so he's, power. he's, so he's, he's a land lover. He's a exactly. continentalist. He doesn't understand exactly, that. exactly. But he's brought them back to be safe from from being attacked in Brest. But what this does is creates a potential problem for the North, for the Arctic convoys, which are which are a development of. Russia and the of the Soviet Union and the UK of Barbarossa, the Soviet Union and the UK being forced into allegiance by Hitler's actions. So suddenly, him moving those battleships is actually quite a good idea, having in fact been a fairly irrational one. What we have here, what we have is the, the UK and the USA. You've lend lease kicking in, and also lend lease from the British, which is, I think, thing that tends to get f- forgotten. It's not, it's not a uniquely one way flow of stuff for the US. Absolutely the, not at all. And to start off of it's predominantly the, 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 the predominantly British, British, I, British stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think it is worth going back into the background of the Arctic convoys. Yeah, def- and, and well, just, definitely, just, definitely. Just, definitely. Just explaining how they come about because people know about PQ seventeen, I think, or or will have heard of Arctic convoys, and they know there's and, and in their minds either they'll have. Pictures of a, you know, a destroyer or a merchant vessel covered, covered in, ice, in ice, yeah, and everyone looking miserable, yeah. Um, but because it's a photograph, it's taken in daylight when actually most of the Arctic convoys are covered <laughs> in, you know, ca- carried out in in darkness, and actually, it it, I mean, it is a much much lesser operation than yeah. than the Atlantic convoys for very yeah. obvious reasons but i do think it's worth just going into a little bit well it's but it's but it's highly political as well it's 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 yes. about the it's about showing willing and that that endless paranoia on stalin's part that he's doing all the soviet union is doing all the fighting all the bleeding yes and that and that the where are his western allies and so so for churchill it's it's an opportunity to 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 um to show that that the allies are the western allies are pulling their weight the fact that when the stuff gets there it's not necessarily welcomed and and all those, there's all sorts of stories about hurricanes and things arriving in in uh, in, in the soviet union and, and you know being unpacked wrong or left out upside down or like so, you know half the um half the hurricanes that are built are sent to yeah. russia pretty much yeah it's amazing I mean, in total it is yeah. incredible. It is absolutely incredible. So the commitment, the commitment is to the, the, the UK and the US will send. I mean, this is to start with, obviously, because it because it balloons. Um, is that the UK and the USA will send four hundred aircraft well per let, month? Let, let, let's go back even even one more All stage right. on that. So so what Excellent. happens is, but Bob Rice happens third week of June goes in yeah. catastrophe for the Russian start of the Soviet Union. Start off with you know yeah. sweeping huge victories. Everyone's thinking, oh my gosh, this is this is the end. Um, this is the panic. We're sending the factories back to the Urals and stuff. But obviously, that creates a hiatus, just the process of sending these factories from the western part of the Soviet Union back kind of 400 miles east of Moscow. It's a bit of a palaver. 
uh, and and it creates a, a production um, hiatus. And there's a fact finding mission which is sent by the Allies, Western Allies. So so Avril Harriman, who um, don't forget America is not in the war at this stage. No, not um, quite. Uh, who's who's the um, the president's but president Roosevelt's special envoy and Lord Beaverbrook, who is a minister of production. They arrive in Moscow on the twenty eighth of September, nineteen forty one. Yeah. The Russians, as you would imagine, are tricky and, and refuse to give details of the losses or anything like that. But but it's despite this this sort of obfuscation on the part of the Soviet Union, it's absolutely clear that they need Western help, PDQ. Yeah. And so an agreement is reached on the 4th of October, which will cover the period of October 1941 to June 1942, which is a period where they reckon it's going to take the time to set up the, the new war production in the Ural, this, this, this stretch to the east of Moscow. What they'll do is... Every June thereafter, they'll take a view and see what's needed and what the shortfall is and, and, and take a view on that point. But yeah, as you were saying, I mean, the US and UK agree to send a heck of a lot a month. I mean, it, when you look at it, it's, I mean, it. although although really, the, 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 this is this is the trickle for when the taps finally open. But, um, but it's, it's 400 aircraft. It's a, lot, it's a lot in the summer of 1941, Bo. I know. Four, four 500 years. tanks for Britain to commit 500 tanks to, to a 500 tank thing in, in um, <clears throat> particularly when they're the prior, because the priority of British production is still fo- is still aircraft at this point. So so that they're going to send 500 tanks, 200 carriers, 22,000 tonnes of rubber, 41,000 tonnes of aluminium. I mean, you're handing over raw materials as well, which is extraordinary, really. Um, 3,860 machi- m- machine tools and food and medicine and raw materials and everything. So, so there is and 400 there is, aircraft, 400 know, four, aircraft which is every month, of which 300 will be fighter planes. I mean, it's, it's absolutely amazing, number. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there's already there's already been a convoy there, hasn't there? PQ one with four with 450 aircraft. It's incre- It's incredible. And that is launched two days after the re- the renewal. The, the agreement is made. So basically, it's it's pre- it's prepped and ready to go before the agreement is made. This is like an emer- don't argue the matter. Just fill up some ships and send them out to out, out to Russia. ASAP, and that that launches on the sixth of October, nineteen forty-one. Three million pairs of boots. I mean, it's it, it, it's it's. I think it, that in itself is absolutely amazing. And given given the the, the the how obviously the Russians are desperate, so you've got to do something. You've got to show some kind of willing, haven't you? And uh, because uh, well, yes, and it, and it's also it's not a, it's not a case that you know curiously it's not it's not dissimilar from the Ukraine side. Well, case, I was just going to say from from a, from a from a from a from a British American point of view, I mean, much much better for them to have to pay the material cost, but not the cost in in manpower. Yes, well, which is which is why very often when people go, well, you know that the Soviets actually they they won the war because they gave a lot more a lot more people died, and the Allies the, the, there are. Cynical people in the Allied command stroking their chins, thinking, "Great, yeah." Well, well, that that, <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that, that sounds true. like winning. That sounds like winning to me. I mean, the other thing, obviously, <laughs> the other thing, obviously, yeah. is that is that what the British, what the British and the Americans, what Churchill's really keen on doing is entangling the Russians in an alliance, isn't he? So he's he he, he, he he's worried that they'll fold. So the, the the better you can get, the better you can get entangled with them. The, be- the better chance there is of defeating Hitler, because he's, you know, he- he's he's doing what he can to sort of. Uh, Ch- Churchill is one of those cynical people stroking his chin, thinking, "Okay, fine." Well, yes, and we- and we've we've spent a lot of time on this podcast sort of talking about um, how the Germans are very unlikely to win anyway, and that Barbarossa yeah. was a cock plan, and and you know they overreached themselves and combination points still has to happen, but but it still has to happen. Try looking at it that rationally and retrospectively when you're in the moment in the summer and autumn yeah. of 1941. It's a very different yeah. different kettle of fish. Yeah. And, you know, you, you have the, the Soviet Union, the Red Army is an unknown quantity. You, you're mm. mistrustful of them anyway because they're communists. Um, yeah. They haven't done very well in the war against Finland. There's been all these military purges. You know, that all stacks up. You know, if you were a commentator back in Britain, you wouldn't give the Russians a Nats chance. No. So... You know, and that's the perspective. So it is a, it is absolutely crisis moment. They yeah. call the, the the convoys PQ are on the way out towards Russia, uh, and QP on the way home. Churchill's initial insistence is that they're going to be running every single ten days. That that it's quickly amazing, turns becomes Im- impracticable. They can't yeah. do it, and they also discover that by. But basically, what they're going to do is is you, you go up, you, you sail out of Scotland, you go north, you go north of the Faroes, you go up, yeah. and, and there's this channel between the Arctic coast of Norway and Bear Island, which is about I think 800 miles to the north, and it is an island. 
and that is a channel and the, and the waters are just a little bit warmer than they might be for the for the latitude because of the um what do you call it the um you know winds tides currents that come from across <laughs> the atlantic you mean you know, the, it's got a name the, what's it called it's the, just gone out of my mind the Atlantic Drift. Is it the Atlantic Drift? I can't remember what it's called. Whatever. Anyway, um, that. Uh, uh, um, you, 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 we're all, you're all shouting in the Caribbean. To, exactly. You're all shouting <laughs> at us right now at the podcast because you all know what it is. Anyway, um, there you go. This isn't, a weather pod, this isn't a weather podcast, as you as it's regular listeners pod. will know. I like talking uh, about the weather, but it's not a weather podcast. <laughs> and, <laughs> but basically, you've got, to, well, you've got to go all the way up the so top it never of goes, Scandinavia. It never goes icy. It never ices You've got to go all the way up the, along the top of Scandinavia, sort of round the elbow of where, is where Mamansk is. If 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 Scandinavia is an arm with a fist, then you've got to go round the corner of the elbow. And to do that, you go round, you go round through those warmer waters at Bear Island as a result of that warm water and whatever coming off the Caribbean. But 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 trust me, it's still it's still very, very cold. It's extremely cold. I mean, this is this is the kind of water you fall into and it kills you because it's so cold. In three minutes. Yeah. In three minutes. Yeah. I mean it, it max. And 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 the North Atlantic drift that we've finally been we've finally been, someone at the Gull Hanger <laughs> office. Went away, made a sandwich, came back <laughs> and told us what that was. Rather, than, Or the Gulf Stream. There we go. Anyway. The, 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 the Gulf um, Stream. That's, that's what it. I'm after. That's, that's what, what I was about. after. The Gulf anyway, Stream. Anyway. But the very po- well. The, the po- the po- very well. The point is, you've got, to, you've got to go all the way up Norway and around the elbow and, t- uh, and in into the, the Kola uh, Inlet, haven't you? Given, given German control of Norway, this is actually extremely difficult. And um, In previous convoy episodes, we've, we've talked about you know, that the Allies close the air gap uh, and that's how in the end they defeat, you know, that, that's the thing that sort of seals the fate of the U-boat force in 1943 is that the air gap's closed. The, the Allied air gap, the Germans have have control of the skies over this entire route, don't they, basically? Once you're clear of the North Sea, once you're clear of the British Isles, as well as this battleship threat we talked about before, the Luftwaffe are very much running the, running the show in the skies over Norway. When we get to it, we're talking about Boxing Day, 1942, Two, aren't we? Uh, no, forty-three, rather. 43. Sorry. No, so, so it's winter. So, how much daylight is there? So, the the the, the literally zip a, none exactly. O- so, so not. I mean, there is daylight, but but it's uh, but 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 I mean, have you ever been up into the Arctic Circle? I have. Yeah, I've I've been to Narvik in January. Yeah, I gigged in Narvik, but in the summer, so it didn't okay, get dark. So where where it was just never dark. Yeah. Okay, well that's amazing. I bet it was lovely. But anyway, so so you get you get you get you get daylight, but it's a it's it's like permanently dusk. So it it's it's light, but it never really gets very light. And and even further north near Bear Island, it's even it's even more so. I mean, think Guns of Navarone. You know, there's this channel of a whopping great gun sticking out of it. I mean, that's that's effectively what they're doing every time they're going on one of these Arctic convoys. Yeah, there's a metaphorical gun, which is the Luftwaffe and and and. Big capital ships like the Scharnhorst yeah. and the Altenfjord, yeah. which and the yeah. Altenfjord is right up at the top. It's, yeah. it's 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 right up at the top. And the other problems is that even once you get to Russia, you can get to Archangel, which has got quite a quite a sophisticated port system. Mm. But that's you you can't get to that for part of the year. So then you have to use Murmansk, and that's literally got nothing. You know, this has got that that that's like sort of South Georgia whaling station. So it, it's really remote. And, and it's full of all sorts of prob- you know, logistical problems for sending convoys there. They get on with it. And by March 1942, 110 merchant vessels have sailed in various convoys. And this is, this is, in, uh, this is what I think is quite interesting, because if you think about those sort of big convoys of, sort of 60 that we were talking about by going across the Atlantic, I mean, that's not even two convoys. No. no. And, and the nature of the beast is, is that you might have half a dozen escort vessels across the Atlantic by the beginning of 1943. But by the end of 1943, you've got 20 merchant vessels protected by similar number of escorts in total. Yeah. So it's because expensive. this is much more fraught and it requires yeah. much more protection, Yeah, yeah which means yeah. your convoys necessarily are going to be smaller in number of ships. And, and, and they're getting up to they're getting up by the spring of 1942 they're getting up to convoys of 40 ships going to going to um uh, up to the arctic but the days are lengthening and this is a problem because of course the absolute opposite of it being darkness mm-hmm. it's now very very light which is great if you're the luftwaffe or great if you're 
surface vessels. Yeah. Well, uh, and 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 actually, because because um, the anti-submarine warfare isn't isn't being operated at the same tempo as in um as in the uh, North Atlantic as in the Atlantic, right. it's it's not so bad for U boats either, is it? I mean, the, basically, this is this is you're, you're sailing into the into the jaws of a trap in a way, aren't you? If you're if you're heading for a yes, for a except the Germans aren't very good at this in the in the <laughs> high Arctic. Um, and no. And in March 1942, the the, the battleship Turpit sails out against PQ-12. Just doesn't catch it at all. Doesn't get to the convoy at all. So it has to sort of return to base, which is which is amazing when you think of the the size of it, the scale of it, the radar, all all the sort of homing techniques, the Luftwaffe they've got. You know, I mean, March 1942 is starting to brighten up pretty quickly. Um, The next convoy, PQ-13, is attacked by aircraft and the Tirpitz, and U-boats, but it's incredibly well protected. So what you've got supporting these Arctic convoys now is the UK's home fleet, which includes battleships, battle cruisers, fighting destroyers, escort which is, destroyers, which corvettes, is really interesting, the whole shooting match. Which is interesting, because by this point, by this point, the threat of air against naval power is, is everyone knows. that the, 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 Arguably, the writing is on the wall, isn't it, for, for large, big ships, isn't it? Because... Because you know the Japanese have shown perfectly well that you can, you, you, if if you train your air crews, um, that you can you can you can sink the, the biggest of the biggest of ships if you want to during the Channel Dash fleet air arm and the RAF failed to do so, but but they learn they, they figure out pretty quickly they've got to sort that out. But the Germans have not learned these lessons and haven't figured it out for themselves either, have they? And so the, the Royal Navy not only do they need because after all, so much of this is being shown war being shown to be done to the Soviets, isn't it? In a way, yeah. isn't it? Because these amounts, these amounts compared to what compared to, like you say, what Britain's getting in the Atlantic convoys, and what's to come with Lend Lease, and of course that that all comes across the Pacific, across Bering Straits. You know, the, the, the other side of the world is where where the Americans end up supplying most of their stuff. This level of commit commitment, these big, big, the ho- that it's the home fleet emphasizes that there there is no worry of uh, you don't need the home fleet at home anymore, do you? Is the is the other thing wrong? No, the other the, part of the Royal no, Naval's but, but, calculation, but, but, isn't it? No, but as we know from looking at the Royal Navy day to day diary. Yeah. You know, the commitments of the Royal Navy globally are absolutely huge. And there's no question this is an incredibly expensive use of what you've got, you know, in fuel. In You know, that fuel's got it, whatever you're using on the Duke of York and the King George V battleships for, for protecting PQ-13, for example, is fuel that you can't use on something else. You, you know, it is a huge commitment. I mean, on that one, even though the Tirpitz and U-boats come out again to try and try and track down PQ-13, only one merchant vessel is lost on the entire convoy. So so the, the point is, is that the convoys are proving incredibly successful. Until. Uh, but, but the Navy are getting <laughs> getting itchy and they're thinking that the sort of 40 ships is becoming, you know, 40 merchant vessels is is becoming unmanageable. And they, they've seen off the Tirpitz on PQ-12 and they've seen off, you know, pretty much the, the German efforts on PQ-13. And the Germans don't even foray out on, on, on a lot of them, but they absolutely do on PQ-17, which is the most notorious Arctic convoy of them all, which launches on the um, 27th of June, 1942, sailing from Ar- um, Iceland to Archangel. And it's an absolute disaster because the Admiralty back at home is also controlling these things. The threat of air attack forces, well, it doesn't force them, but 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 it leads to the Admiralty calling the convoy to disperse, which is, it's just, it's just a... Absolutely insane idea, and, and it's been debated and discussed and chewed over ad finitum, and there's no really rational reason for it, but 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 they do. And as a result of that, um, 24 of the merchant vessels are sunk, and only thir- only 10 of them managed to get to Archangel. I mean, that's incredible, isn't it? It's, it's that, an absolute but, disaster. But I think it's interesting, isn't it? Because, you know, uh, uh, as you say, that the PQ-13, it all goes well for the Royal Navy, you know. Um, uh, we complacency, uh, maybe, I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe PQ-12, not. PQ-12, it goes, prefer. well, or just luck. You know, just, just the planets aligning. This time, Tirpitz, the, the radar operator on Tirpitz found it. You know, and there's more. there's much more daylight to play with here. That's the other thing. It's, there's, there's Yes, Indeed, the, the far, absolutely. You know, it's, it's June, so it's basically light. It's that part of the world. It's light all day, isn't it? So it's midsummer. So every, the, the Germans have got everything, everything going for them that in March they perhaps don't. And I think, and they're getting obviously it's happening again and again and again. So you track, you learn how to track the movements. You learn, you know, everyone's everyone's there's learning, patterns. everyone's adapting. There's well, patterns and all well, that sort well, of thing. Well, 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 yes. And you're and, and from a convoy sailing, sailing point of view, your your routes are are limited in a way they're not in the Atlantic. Yeah. I mean, you can go 
all over the Atlantic. I mean, it's a vast, vast, vast ocean. Whereas the Arctic, that, that, that strait of kind of sort of, you know, 750, 800 miles between Norway and Bear Island is actually, you know, in the big scheme of things, quite, There's only one way quite you a can small go. stretch. There's only yeah. one way you can go, exactly. What, what is interesting is, is that after PQ-17, Arctic convoys are suspended, and that's partly because of the catastrophe of, of, of PQ-17, but it's also because the Allies are now preparing for, for, for Torch, which at this point in the second half of 1942 is the first major amphibious operation they've undertaken. You know, they haven't done anything on this scale before. This is, a, you know, Torch, Operation Torch, largely forgotten now in the big scheme of things. The first major combined Allied amphibious operation of the Second World War. You know, obviously there are other op- of amphibious operations, Operations, but not not on this scale, and it requires all the shipping they can possibly have, including include of naval shipping. You know, I mean, l- leave the Second World War out of this of all time. It's the, the, the thing of all the, time. Yes, yeah, just it, it 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 is at the time it happens. It is the largest amphibious operation ever in the history of the world. No, no one's ever undertaken anything like this ever before. I mean, for the, for regular listeners, this is where we get. If you want, click on your drop down menu, and Jim will talk about shipping for five minutes. The limitation. <laughs> Um, <laughs> um, well, but we'll, yes. we, 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 well, we don't. We, we, well, because we're talking about shipping, I think we don't need to talk about shipping. If you see what I mean, there, Jim. The Allies are spinning lots of plates, and at the moment, they have to go and pay attention to the, the plate in Africa that they need to spin on the, on the pole. We, we've been talking for twenty-seven minutes. We haven't even got to the yeah, convoy but, in question. Yeah, but well, I'll tell you what. So let's so let's take let's take a very quick break and. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll 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 come back after PQ seventeen, torch round the corner. What do the Allies do next and what takes us to Boxing Day of nineteen forty three? We'll see you in a moment. When it comes to picking the perfect treats for your dog, Stuart makes the choice easy by keeping it real. Real ingredients, real nutrients, real benefits. Stuart dog treats are free from additives, corn, soy, wheat, and grains. Plus, they're freeze-dried to lock in all the great nutrition and natural flavor your furry friend deserves. Stuart freeze-dried dog treats. Big, tail-wagging nutritional benefits. Available on Amazon and Chewy. Learn more at stuartpet.com. Love the way you look this wedding season at Men's Warehouse. With the range of sizes from extra small to big and tall. Explore top styles at prices for any budget, including designer suit and tux rentals starting at just $159. With over 600 locations, in-store consultations, and easy online booking, there's a reason why couples choose Men's Warehouse to find their perfect fit. Men's Warehouse. Love the way you look. Kick off 2024 with big savings at Blinds.com's Big Thank You Sale. We wouldn't be the number one online retailer of custom window treatments without you. So we're showing our appreciation with big savings on premium blinds, shades, shutters, and more. And with Blinds.com's 100% satisfaction guarantee, if your order isn't perfect, we'll always make it right. Shop Blinds.com's Big Thank You Sale happening now and save up to 45%. Up to 45% off at Blinds.com. Rules and restrictions may apply. Welcome back to We Have Ways of Making You Talk. Um, hi there, Mahartis. Um, uh, I've just, <laughs> we're we're, we're I've sort just had, of talking the Battle of the North Cape, but we haven't actually got there yet. I've taken my tot of the rum ration, and I'm trying to speed things along. Um, the, 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 <laughs> I mean, the basin so, has so, whistled. Well, as, exactly. Well, so is uh, uh, <laughs> Admiral on deck. I mean, the the the. the, the uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, very well. Um, I used to, yeah, very well. I used to, uh, on an old program I used to work on, whenever the director came down from the gallery, if ever he came down from the gallery onto the, onto the set to talk to me, I'd do that whistle. <laughs> too, too annoying. <laughs> Repetitive <laughs> gags are funny. It's just, well, they, they, they def- most definitely. Most definitely. No, it's definitely, but um, but 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 uh, as, as well as Allied shipping not being able to be in two places at once. I mean, one of the other crucial things is is Nork and the Luftwaffe. So the Luftwaffe's, and this is a, a recurring chorus of the Second World War: is the Luftwaffe can't do Norway and the Eastern Front and protect and France Malta. and fight and Malta <laughs> and 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 yeah. North Africa and uh, and eventually protect the, the the fatherland as well. It can't do all these things at once, and so. Just as the Allies are having to siphon off shipping for for torch, that then creates pressure on the Luftwaffe elsewhere that they then have to siphon aircraft off 
for as well. This is st- for the Allies. They're robbing Peter to pay Paul at this stage of the war. For the Germans, they are always robbing Peter to pay Paul. They never, never find themselves, never find themselves not in that situation. So. When the convoys resume, the conditions are horrendous. I remember our old vicar um, in my parents' village, a fellow called Paul Drake. He'd done some he'd done some Arctic convoys, and and uh, he'd, he'd, I remember him saying that he'd, he'd grown a beard, um, and the captain told him to shave it off because he looked ridiculous. That was that's that's all I remember about him talking about. <laughs> and so, so what happens, doesn't it? Is is that, is that, is that by the winter of nineteen forty two, suddenly you've got the Stalingrad crisis. So what happens is suddenly they need the Luftwaffe over there and they can't be in Norway and be in the Soviet Union on the Eastern Front. So a lot of the Norwegian Luftwaffe gets pushed over to to support Stalingrad and what's happening there on that on, on the sort of mess that has become in case blue. And that gives the Allies another opportunity to start restart the, the Arctic convoys. And obviously, it makes more sense to kind of re- restock in in winter anyway. But but you know these are these are just unspeakably awful conditions in which to sell anything because it's freezing cold. There's lots and lots of storms. That's where you get all those pictures of merchant vessels and destroyers covered in ice and all the rest of it. I mean, it is absolutely brutal. So they're not safe from U-boats, but as we know, the U-boats aren't terribly effective by this stage. Uh, but the, their, their problem is the conditions. Into, so into 43... Oh, sorry, I'm just going to interrupt there because what I've been saying is I've been saying that Bear Island is 800 miles north of um, of, of Norway. It's it's nothing like... It's like 300 miles. 300 it's 300 miles. Yeah. miles. So that is a very, very narrow strait, really, in, in naval terms. Yeah, uh, and, and, and in the winter, of course, the ice cap's further down and all that sort of thing. So you've got it, le- le- even less room for manoeuvre. But but by spring and summer they they're no longer PQQP they they their JW is outbound RA is homebound what are they are they coming is it, back is, is that because of is that because of the trauma of PQ seventeen it must be it must, it's a rebranding exercise it's what we it's what it's what we would call a rebrand isn't it it's uh it's ch- changing ch- changing the name of a thing because it's it's gone like the chalk history festival did they, did they- <laughs> Do they, do they it come used to back be the in? Daily Mail Chalk Valley History Festival. Now it's the independent there we go. <laughs> free they, of sponsor. Do they, do they come back empty, these ships? What do the merchant vessels come back with? Yes, they come back empty. That's amazing. Mm. Because the rest of the rest of global, you know, as we talked about the other week when we talked about um, uh, uh, Peter Gretton's convoy, isn't it? Is that the ships then come into they come into they come into the home home waters basically, and then they're redirected elsewhere, and they change their loads, they move on, and they carry on. These ships come back empty. I mean, that is yeah. that is amazing in itself, isn't it? Yeah. The, 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 yeah, it is amazing, might. isn't it, that you could do an Atlantic convoy, you're, you're, home in, you're, you're based in Liverpool for three days, fill up again, and then you go to West Africa. But the, the goods are always moving. But the goods, that this is this is a one way this is a one way trip for the goods. There's no the, the, the Soviets aren't going. All right, here have some turnips or something. I mean, whatever the what have the what have the Soviets got to give away? What tractors? There's, a, mean, there's other changes. There's other changes. It's not just to say that outbound is now JW. The inbound is yeah. the back home RA. Is, is RA. But but Admiral John Tovey is the is the um, is the commander in chief of the Home Fleet, and he is absolutely not happy about about the large convoys which Churchill is insisting on. But he yeah. does insist on on shortening them or or, or cutting them back. And, yeah. and this time, Churchill and the Admiralty go okay, fine. And well, um, and what he's worried about is dispersing by accident in bad weather. That 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 you know, because it is difficult. The, the weather makes it very difficult to hold together, as we'll, as we'll find with the with the Charnel's convoy. In the end, is that that the, there are issues with keeping everyone on track. And we talked about that. We talked about that before, didn't we? That that, that not everyone's steaming at the same rate of knots. And so you, you've you're always got the slowest. The stragglers are the thing that hold you up that you have to worry. And this sort of shepherding effort by by the convoy escort um, yeah. uh, but, is but, more difficult in difficult seas. And these are difficult seas and dangerous seas. So 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 Tovey's worried about dispersal, intentional or otherwise, isn't he? I mean, they're, they're, although they're not going to intentionally disperse again, they've learned they've learned that particular bitter lesson. I mean, have, having so JW fifty one A. Sails on the 15th of December, 42. JW-51B, the, the 22nd of December. The Germans send out their potl- pocket battleships, Ad- Admiral Hipper and yeah, Yes, it's also worth saying that, that one of the compromises on reducing the size and scale of the um, uh, of the convoys is, is 
to effectively send out the same amount, but you do it in two convoys, A and yeah, B. So, you've broken so in they're two. a week apart. And what yeah. you also try and do is you try and um, um, align the return convoy with the uh, with the outbound convoy, so yeah. that when they're in this critical strait near Bear Island. Yeah, it's all part They're of kind of one passing thing. one another, which means yeah. that you can maximise your heavy escort yeah. work. That is complicated, though. That 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 that's an extra. It's very complicated, it? but the, but that is the yeah. that's the principles yeah. behind it. Yeah. Which you know is sensible so, on paper, at any rate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, and you know, you, you you've got to keep this thing going, haven't you? And you've got to be seen to be keeping yes. it going because of because of Soviet po- Soviet demand. The, the the first of this new system under Tovey and the rebranding is JW51, because that leaves Scotland uh, 51A, that leaves um, Lock U in Scotland on the 15th of December, and JW51B then sails on the 22nd of December. Yeah, and then the Germans attack um, 51B, but the but the destroyer escort stop them. Um, so the, the, the Germans... The Germans- um, it, it fails, and as it, as as ever, Hitler's reaction is tempered. Um, he immediately orders the scrapping of the Kriegsmarine's heavy warships. I just think he's—it's just sort of like, yeah, all right, they didn't work that time, mate. Like, like, chill out. Um, <clears throat> and and this results in in Admiral Raider um, uh, resigning in the in the end, doesn't it? Is that he goes to Hitler, yes, absolutely. He, pre- he, 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 says, he, pre- he pre- we need it. We need a surface fleet. It will work. It will work. We, you know, we just need to. We just need to get it. We just need a bit more practice. And you, you've got to understand the value of this mine Führer. And Hitler says no. Raider resigns, cut, and then Dönitz replaces him. And I think the timing on this is very interesting because Dönitz is Dönitz is Dönitz is about to throw in the towel in the Atlantic, isn't he? Or he's not far yeah. from throwing in the towel in the Atlantic. Yet he's happy to take the promotion. To, to um uh, uh and, I, and see, for me, Dernitz is like he's 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 like Castlering. He's one of these guys. He's sort of seen as you know, air commas, a, a sort of half decent Nazi, and he's not. He's yeah. an absolute asshole. He's a, he's a yeah. vile, awful person, and determined, determined to, to to you know, he's climbing the ladder here, isn't he? So um, he he he's he also replaced- the guy that oversees these unspeakable drugs tests because because uh, uh, towards the end of the war when they've suddenly they've they've been the the, the main U boats and they've just got these these sort of you know they've got these little mini submarines and they want these guys that they want the guys that are manning them to be in them for basically kind of sort of four days at a time and how do you keep them awake well you keep them awake with kind of sort of you know pervertin extra. And they do all the drugs testing on on inmates at Saxonhausen, and it is completely sanctioned by the Kriegsmarine. It's a it's a total. It's nothing to do with the SS. It's nothing to do with the Nazi high high elite or anything like that. It is absolutely well, a and, Kriegsmarine, and, you know, to- a sanctioned, backed, supported operation, and it's just disgusting. And that's on well, Dennis's watch. And, to jump, and he takes to, over his Führer. Well, well, that's exactly what I was going to say. To jump forward, I mean, it, it's not like it's not like Hitler's going to give that job to someone who's lukewarm, is it? <laughs> <laughs> you seem a decent sort. You seem, you, you, you're not as into this as the others. I'm going to give you the job. I mean, it's just, it's just <laughs> yes, exactly. So anyway, so he's um, filth. So so he comes in and he uh, he uh, and persuades Hitler to keep the heavy warships. So I mean, this is this is clearly well, Raider because he's, just, because his 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 chucking of toys out of the pram session has you know it's a base. I mean, what, what tends yeah. to happen with Hitler is he goes absolutely apeshit and you know. The, then his interest goes somewhere else. Yeah, and and exactly, and and Dernitz is, is enough of a suck up to realise that and and work his way around it and and saves the saves the warships. Well, he doesn't save all of the warships well, because no. the Admiral Hipper, Leipzig, and Köln have already been decommissioned. Yeah. And but he's uh, hung on to the Scharnhorst. Yeah, and the Tirpitz and the Lutzoff, which are which are which are well worth like hanging on to, and it, the yeah. the potential they offer. Um. Uh, uh, it, it is is there's nothing to be sniffed at, and it's still a thing for the navy to be concerned about. However, they're not, as you said earlier, they're not very good at this. Because so in September, as the winter comes, Scharnhorst um, uh, and ten destroyers, they lit, and the Tirpitz, they go out, they go out to bombard Spitsbergen for some training, and their gunnery is so bad on the Scharnhorst, the captain puts to sea immediately again for training because they're 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 so bad at it, which I think's. It's just amazing. It's they're four years into the war. They're four years into the war, and the and the and they can't join get the gunnery to join up. Then the, the Royal Navy attacks the Tirpitz, 
while it's um, uh, 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 Anchorage on, on these exercises, destroys her engines and keeps her out until April 44. And that's, I mean, that's a big, that is a really big deal, actually, when you think about the sort of strategic potential of the Tirpitz. Well, you're talking you know, about, about kind of, and you're also talking about Bang for your buck. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. You know, we've argued that the dams raid was pretty effective, but I mean, yeah. you know, one midget submarine, that's, you've got yeah. to say that's, uh, that's a bit yeah. of a result, isn't it? The, the following day, the 23rd of September, the Lutzoff goes, goes for a refit. You end up with the Scharnhorst and six destroyers as four destroyer flotilla, Zestora flotilla. Yeah. Um, as, as a battle group north. As, as exactly as, as that's the Germans asset for dealing with the Arctic convoy. So it's been whittled down by Hitler throwing a, a, a wobbly, um, a mini sub and, and the necessary repairs on the Lutzov. So from, from having, uh, uh, you know, half a dozen capital ships in that part of the world, you've now got one, um, which isn't to say that, that the Shanos is anything to sort of, um, sort of poo poo. Cause it's a, well, uh, it, we'll is see, this a moment to discuss what the Shanos yes. is. I think I think it is, and then for the following episode, we will talk about the battle. <laughs> so, the Shan Horse is the lead ship of a uh, and and actually, uh, so I've got to say, I mean, huge thanks to great friend of the show, Steve Prince, on this, <laughs> um, who repeatedly comes to our rescue and and yeah. um i asked him all sorts of sort of you know ridiculous questions about this yeah. Uh, yeah. uh my question was steve is the Scharnhorst a battleship or a battle cruiser um <laughs> which prompted one of the longest replies to a whatsapp message from steve i've yes. ever had um, which include- included emojis of helmets <laughs> Yes, that's right. I, I now have my helmet on for detailed responses. Um, uh, uh, well, so so basically, I, and the thing is, though, this is really, you know, he, he jokes about this. Um, uh, the reality is so much beyond the top trumps, though top trumps is an important element. It's a really important element um, before the war, isn't it? Because after all, what the Scharnhorst is a product of, is a, it's a product of the of the Versailles uh, Treaty, isn't it? Where the, what the Germans are allowed to, to produce in the terms of, in terms of battleships, is prescribed by international treaty, isn't it? That they're not allowed anything more than 10,000 tons or 11-inch guns. And, <clears throat> and, and then, of course, in, in, in 1935, the, um, the, the, the British and the Germans signed the uh, Anglo-German Naval Agreement, where the British, again, uh, uh, you know, say you're only allowed this many this many ships and th- th- this is this is deep stuff rooted in post victorian power politics before you know after all there are, there are general elections in 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 the uk that are won won and lost on the number of battleships that britain will build so this is really important stuff and the top trumps aspect of it on paper what a battleship is really really matters for reasons of international diplomacy and you know the Germans agree to to a, a slight enlargement of these classes after thirty five, don't they? And the Germans know that they can't build anything too big because they don't want to. They don't want to set alarm bells ringing. Hitler wants big battleships for reasons of national prestige, because and also because he's got you know, and also because he likes stuff that's big. Well, yeah, but but it's also but also if your if your political pitch is that you've reje- you're rejecting Versailles and Versailles unf- unfair, you are at some point going to have to build an enormous battleship, aren't you? To in order to publicly repudiate the treaty so so, so a battleship just as to say a battleship is is, is you know 38 one. to forty two thousand tons something you know it's that kind of ilk and getting bigger during the second world war i mean you know these are vast vessels so the Scharnhorst is thirty two thousand tons yeah so rather, it's, it's pretty, whereas the duke of york um yeah. battleship and the king george but, v they're about 38 aren't they i mean a thing a thing is worth comparing to in a way is, is you know in tank technology it's firepower Protection and maneuverability, isn't it? The 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 that's kind of trio versus a Sherman, isn't it? Well, so in a way, the Scharnhorst is kind of like a like a you know, it's like a it's like a a well, Stug four, isn't it? It's a it's it's the chassis of an old a light chassis with a big gun on it. Is 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 the idea? And the idea that the Scharnhorst is is nippy. They've compromised on protection. The idea is that it's very very quick um, and and could do sort of thirty five knots, can't it? So it's a quick. It's a, Maybe it's not a, quite as much as that, but 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 it but but it's, 32 it's over knots. thirty knots. Thirty-two yeah, yeah, knots, so, yeah. Yeah, 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 something yeah. like that. Yeah, and the Bismarck but, but, class. But it is huge. It is. It is. Yeah, I mean, I know, it's, it's a gigantic ship. I mean, we're talking it's about two hundred thirty-four point like nine meters long, yeah. uh, with a beam of thirty meters. I mean, that is a big beast. It's got it's got yeah. nine 
280 millimeter guns, which is sort of roughly 11 inches. Yeah. Um, yeah. Three triple gun turrets. It's yep. got 12 150 millimeter guns. It's got 14 105 millimeter guns. It's got 16 37 <laughs> millimeter guns, 16 20 millimeter guns, and six <laughs> torpedo tubes. And and to put that in some perspective, there are only 32 guns along the entire coast of Normandy on June the 6th, 1944, of 88 yeah. millimeter or above. Yeah. There's only two 88 millimeters overlooking Omaha Beach on yeah. D-Day. So this you can has see... Ni- this has, has 1,405 millimeter, 1,250 millimeter, nine 280 millimeter. So this, this is... An absolute beast. So you can see why you might be having conniptions in the Admiralty about about a thing like the Scharnhorst. You can see why the, 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 the worry is. And in its first action at sea, in November 1939, it sank HMS Royal Pindy, which is a cruiser, British Royal Navy cruiser, and also helped sink HMS Glorious, first the second aircraft carrier to be lost. Yes, well, World. yes, that's... That's in, in that's very much so, on people's minds, yeah. You know, so so, so, so it, it's got form basically. It's a sort of Vinnie Jones ship, isn't it? It's got form. It's tilled up. But I suppose, strictly <laughs> speaking, uh, I mean, so, so Steve says, I said, well, was the Shanghai a battleship yeah. or a battle cruiser? He says you've just opened a thousand specialist opinions. It is a compromise. I think we should just settle for battle cruiser and just accept that there's some debate on this. But but the Royal Navy always talk about it being a battleship because obviously you know because they sank it yeah because they sank it you know it's a bit like <laughs> yeah. it was a it was it was a Mark IV really but everyone says it was a Tiger yeah I mean the the thing is, the thing is the thing is is um uh, uh, the, the the punter would look at it and think it was a battleship but that but but wouldn't wouldn't they um but whereas your your naval your naval expert will know will know that it's you know it's like what people call self propelled guns tanks. I mean, in the end, if you're if you're on the receiving end of the thing, it doesn't matter, does it? It doesn't matter. Um, it's, the, it's the thing that's moving. It's got big gun. It's hit you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, so, but, but I suppose the point, point I'm trying to make is is the Sean Horse laid down in 1936. Is it, you know, it's it's a it's a substantial capital ship. Whether you whether you want to quibble over it being a pocket battleship, a battle cruiser, or a battleship, neither here nor there. The bottom line is it's huge, uh, and it's got lots of firepower, and and you know it's not not anything to be taken lightly. But one of the problems that the, the Scharnhorn has, just like the rest of the Kriegsmarine, is because the navy is so small in 1939, whether it be the U-boat fleet or the or the surface fleet, they just don't have the expertise. They don't have the expertise to spread through this, you know, a new expanding. Uh, and the Germans throughout the Second World War are constantly going into battle with commanders away. You know, so so the the commander of the Northern Group is on leave in December 1943 when when this convoy um, 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 sails. Dönitz has said that the next one that comes through, we're going to attack it, come what may. They've got forty cadets on board the on the Scharnhorst because some of the regular crew are away. You know, which out of forty out of fifty six officers is quite a big hit. I mean, you know, this is what happens when you hollow a navy out. Um it's what happens when you hollow or, a navy or, out. Or exactly any that. or any arm if you hollow it out and you know if you're if you're not committed to it properly. And, it, and it, as the Japanese discover um, you know, later on in the war, you can have the most sophisticated bit of aircraft carrier or battleship in the world. But if you haven't got the crew to man it properly, you might as well not have it at all. The scene is the scene is set for December of 1943. The, yeah. um, uh, and in our next podcast, we will tell you what happens to this um, bristling uh, uh, ship of doom, the Scharnhorst. Yes. Um, and, and, and what happens fight- to convoy JW55B? So this it's is... Just, I mean, I, I've got to say, it's all a bit too prosaic, isn't it? JW... Why isn't it... They, they, why didn't they give them names? You know, pedestal yeah. helps. That you, you can. You, yeah, 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 yeah. It's not. It's, it's not a, a good runner. I mean, HX two three one. That just that felt slick, didn't it? <laughs> JW fifty five B. No, it feels like not, it, you know. It feels like it's a sort of government missive. Yes, it does. Yeah. Well, which in which which in a way it is. We are sending and, and, you form JW fifty five B, and if you don't do this, you will be imprisoned and prosecuted. What we all just what we all see is that the Royal Navy find the opportunity to attack the Scharnhorst and grab it with both hands. We will see you next time. Um, We hope you've enjoyed this. Cheerio. Cheerio. Cheerio.